coverage you can count on. You're watching Sports Expo. It's so damn hot. Milk was a bad choice. Milk is never a good choice on a hot day, and it was one of the hottest days ever for the greatest spectacle in racing, the Indianapolis 500. The temperature was in the low 90s, but on the track, it reached up into the 130s. Now, I'm showing you Ron Burgundy drinking milk because that's the tradition for the winner of the Indy 500. During the evening news earlier, Craig McMorris asked how that tradition started, so I researched it for him, and it's because the winner back in 1936 got out of his car and asked for a cold glass of buttermilk. He said his mom recommended the drink on hot days. Drinking milk then became the post-race tradition for the winner of the Indy 500 and later milk companies began sponsoring the race. Let's see who drinks the milk this year. It was so hot, Zach Veach's car goes up in flames. Yeah, well, they had some gas on the car too, but where, where's the help from his guys? I mean, there's one dude like spraying water from like 50 feet away, does nothing. He would be okay. How about Danica Patrick racing for the final time in her career? She gets loose on lap 68 and that would end her day. She would be okay. With five laps left, race leader Stefan Wilson would have to pit because he was low on gas. Will Power would take over first, and the guy with one of the best names in sports goes on to take the checkered flag. It's his first career Indy 500 victory in 11 tries, and here you go, Craig. He drinks a little bit of milk, pours out the rest. If it's 90 plus degrees, I don't blame him, but being covered in milk doesn't seem like much fun either. That, that, that's gotta be sticky to clean off. Hey, before the big race, there was a wedding on the campgrounds outside the Indianapolis Speedway. The happy couple dressed perfectly for the occasion, Memorial Day weekend. I think they walked down the aisle to Kid Rock's American Badass. I'm not quite sure, but how about the bridesmaids? You saw their picture, the guests. There's the first kiss for the bride and groom and the bouquet held together by a bottle of Miller Lite. I guess they saved a lot of money by getting hitched like this. Let's hope they live happily ever after. Look at Griner telling to shake. Here comes the change up. Get it down. Got him swinging. It continues to add to that season best strikeout total. That's number six for Blaine Hardy. He did not throw a single pitch over 90 miles an hour, but Blaine Hardy was deceptive and turned in his best game as a starting pitcher. You know, if he continues to throw strikes like this, the Tigers will have another guy they can flip at the trade deadline for a prospect or two. Hardy throws a career-high seven innings, allowing one run on three hits while striking out six. That's the most he's ever K'd in a big league game. The 31-year-old is only starting because Jordan Zimmerman is on the disabled list, but you could easily argue that Hardy should stay in the rotation when Zimmerman comes back. In three starts, Hardy's gone 16 and a third innings, allowing five earned runs for an ERA of 2.76. Meanwhile, Zimmerman is at 4.88. The Tigers' offense does just enough to get the job done. Tied up fifth inning, Dixon Machado with an RBI single that breaks an 0 for 16 streak at the plate. Later, Nick Castellanos with his team leading 28th RBI. He's hitting 323 this season, and he looks like an all-star. Shane Green would give up a solo home run in the ninth, but then he would get things under control and earn the save. Here is Hardy and Gardy on the victory. You know, I got through the fifth. I was like, all right, I got one more in me, and I got through the sixth. I was like, yeah, I can do one more. <laughs> and then I got in the dugout, and Gardy didn't say anything. It was like, oh, boy, here, maybe I'll have to go out for the eighth. And then they finally pressed me, like, oh, you're, good job. I was like, it's not always about the velocity. Uh, we love velocity, but it's not always about that. It's about command and the strike zone with all your pitches. And he worked ahead in the count for the most part all day long and had them, you know, on the uh, uh, trying to sit back and figure out what he was doing, and that's a good way to pitch. In the Midwest League, the Loons win for the second day in a row over Lake County. 7-3 the final in this one. Well, for the first time in almost 40 years, we get a pair of Game 7s in the NBA's Conference Finals. The Warriors and Rockets play in Houston tomorrow night, and the Cavs and Celtics play tonight in Boston. LeBron James trying to reach the NBA Finals for the eighth season in a row. Under six minutes left, Cavs trail by one. 
Jeff Green in the corner for three of his huge 19 points. Boy, was he big for the Cavs today. After a Boston miss, James, nice feed to Tristan Thompson. Cavs up four. Keep possession now with 90 seconds on the clock. Celtics down five. Terry Rozier in the corner for three. No good. Cleveland gets the board, and LeBron will see. George Hill releasing deep. Hill makes the reverse layup. That's a seven-point Cleveland lead. After a timeout, Boston needs a make. Jalen Brown, no. James will go coast to coast. Check this out. He gets tackled, still finishes. LeBron plays all 48 minutes, scores 35 points with 15 rebounds and nine assists. 87-79 the final score. Cleveland reaches the NBA Finals for the fourth season in a row. That'll do it for Sports Extra tonight. And remember, milk on a hot day is a bad choice. See ya.